Bob Blue. He is an attorney, and he defended the Black Panther Party defendants back in 1969. I don't know if you remember the Black Panther Party back in 1969, but he defended them. All 13 defendants were acquitted of all charges after an eight-month trial. Yeah. He's got a long resume. I don't have enough time to go through it, so I'm just going to pick the highlights. He represented with other attorneys, Earth First activists who were the victims of a car bomb assassination attempt. They were treated as criminals by the FBI and the Oakland Police. He sued the FBI and the Oakland Police Department and won the largest ever jury verdict against the FBI. involvement in a 2001 arson that was committed by members of the Earth Liberation Front. He is presently representing Joseph Buddenberg, one of the four young animal rights activists accused of being terrorists because they allegedly picketed in front of the homes of animal researchers working for the University of California. Bob Lowe. Hi, thank you all for being here. It's a, really a delight. Uh, you know, it, this all happened uh, by accident back in 1969. I was kind of uh, doing some R.A. stuff, but I got involved with the uh, Black Panther Party in a particular case, and it changed my life in so many ways. Uh, for one thing, uh, the truths that I learned uh, from the people and the courage that I learned uh, to respect, uh, really did change my life. And, uh, one, of the, one of the ways that my life has been affected is uh, I have represented a number of different kinds of activists, a Puerto Rican independence struggle, uh, Palestinians, uh, Judy Barry, who wasn't mentioned by name, uh, Brianna, and now the animal rights movement. And I have to tell you that to see your faces and to see your presence and to know your courage and your Particularly, thank you. Uh, is very inspiring to me. It really, uh, and it's made me a better person. Uh, and I should tell you, uh, I mentioned Alex, uh, and I'm close to doing vegan now. <laughs> I was told to start with a joke, and I'm just going to do a quick joke, because I heard it the other day, and it's kind of funny. Um, what's the difference between Tiger Woods and George, uh, George W. Bush? And the answer is, Tiger Woods is a great golfer, and George W. Bush is a fucking asshole. <laughs> Uh, kind of a one-liner again, 
is that um, when justice comes out of court, it's kind of like a broken clock that's right twice a day. Uh, other than that, the courts are not for justice, they're for repression. And this statute, uh, the Animal Enterprise Terrorism Act, before we get to terrorism, the concept of animal enterprise seems to be, it struck me in my readings, uh, in preparation for this, and just in general preparation for the case, the concept that there are, that the way animals are treated, it's like you can have an enterprise, a business enterprise, uh, that uses and tortures animals. It just doesn't seem right. You know, there's a, I picked out one quote from a professor at Morehouse College, name was Charles Magel. I don't read it, it's very brief. Ask the experimenters why they experiment on animals, and the answer is, quote, because the animals are like us. Ask the experimenters why it's morally okay to experiment on animals, and the answer is, because the animals are not like us. That's what this case is about. These four young people, Joe Budenberg is my client, and three other really wonderful young men and women, uh, what they did was they spoke up. They found the names, or they were accused of finding the names and addresses of uh, animal experimenters, and doing nothing more than picketing and shaming them, letting their neighbors know who their neighbors are. That's what they did. There used to be this thing called the First Amendment. Well, uh, if the government had its way, the First Amendment is out the door. And this case is so important because even for those people who as to whom animal rights is not their cause, uh, this is the first step. This is the Trojan horse in <clears throat> stepping on one or another social movement uh, or geopolitical movement. That's the way that's what they do, and that's the way they do it. The history of the statute is quite amazing. In October of 2005, nearly four years ago, a particular senator who introduced this truly the worst senator of the hundred, his name is Ian Paul, uh, a horrible human being. He introduced it, and he introduced it at the behest of the National Association for Biomedical Research. Um, soon thereafter, the Senator Feinstein from the state uh, endorsed it and became a co-sponsor. Eventually, this legislation passed on voice vote in the Senate and in the House of Representatives with no dissenting voices. They may have been dissenters, but they weren't heard on the day of the vote. What do they do? They have to they talk about animal enterprise, then they talk about terrorism. And I don't have to tell you that terrorism is today's scare word. It used to be communism, that's kind of faded, but they still are relying on socialism, but terrorism is the deal. If you can call somebody a terrorist, their battle is half done. And that's why the statute is, has the word terrorism in it. And it's important to know that this prosecution I uh, may pointed it out, is the very first prosecution under this statute. Uh, and it's basically prosecuting pictures. That's what they did. Uh, that's what they're accused of doing. There's an FBI affidavit. This is quite interesting. There's an FBI affidavit by the agent who's in charge of the case. And she laid out four particular incidents. And it's all about First Amendment stuff. It's all about picketing. Well, for the first time I've ever seen in 40 years, the indictment that came down doesn't have any details. It just says picketing, harassing, threatening, and so on. It doesn't lay out the details. I've never seen that in any indictment that has a conspiracy count. And I want to believe that you're just embarrassed to put it in a public indictment. Uh, that these people stood in front of people's homes and picketed and made noise and said four letter words and rub the chalk on the sidewalks. That's what the case is about. Congress was warned when this statute was under consideration that they were going to use it uh, to prosecute people who were simply exercising their First Amendment rights. Uh, and sure enough, Congress didn't listen. 
And here it is, the very first prosecution. And that's what it's about. And it's about punishment. But in the end, the way around this is to get immense support from you all, from people you can bring in. And in the end, it's not going to be about the judge. It's not going to be about the prosecutor. It's going to be about the jury. That's why I've done this for 40 years. If there were no juries, I'd have been long gone. Because the judges don't do it. The judge, judges are not there for justice. Uh, judge White uh, is a Republican appointee. He's been around for years. Uh, I would not count on him to do anything good. We're going to have to count on the jury. And in this particular case, the prosecutor was able to manipulate it this case could have been brought in the Oakland Division of the Northern District of California, which is where most of the accusations, uh, most of the events took place. But they cho chose to do it in San Jose because they think they're going to get a more conservative jury panel. They will stop like nothing. So, do what you can, help in any way you can. Uh, please follow it on the Portland Indian Media, follow it on the website. Um, we need all the support you can get. We can give us, I'm sorry. And thank you for all you do. Uh, you're really courageous people. Thank you.